Hi everyone, welcome to another video on ellipse construction and today we're going to learn what exactly concentric circles method is and this is this is rather a very easy method. Now again, you need to know what the major axis is, you need to know what the minor axis is and once you know that, well, you can apply this method to construct an ellipse and here we go. Now I'm going to be assuming the data is just, just as we did in the previous uh, explanation that was uh, based on oblong method. And here also, we will take the major axis as 125, let's say AB as 125 and minor axis that is CD as 75 millimeters. So let's go ahead and let's unleash. Here we go. Let me draw a horizontal line. This is major axis AB. Well, that is going to have a center. Let's say it's O, right? And through this O, we'll have a minor axis, right? Now, minor axis is 75 millimeters. So let me randomly draw a line. And that essentially means, so the minor axis starts from C and it ends at D. Well, since it is 75 millimeter long, so half of that minor axis will be above O and the remaining half, that is 75 by 2 will be below O. And this is going to be something, something like this that is going to give you the precise location for point O and this is going to be point D. And if you want to take a closer look at this, let me have the dimensions also. This is 125 from A to B. That means 62.5 to the left of O and 62.5 to the right of O. In the same manner, we have 37.5 above O and 37.5 below O. Done. Now, in the next step, what we'll try to do is, watch this, watch this. I've drawn a circle. This circle has been drawn using O as the center and with this AB as the diameter or some of you guys might also refer to this as with OB as the radius, whatever. And you need to draw this again, again with O as the center and with CD as the diameter or with OC or OD as the radius. Done. So these are the two concentric circles. The inner circle pertains to the uh, minor axis you can say and the outer circle pertains to the major axis. Now let me talk about how we can approach this particular method. Circle makes an angle of 360 degrees, right? And what we'll essentially try to do is, we'll try to divide this circle into 12 equal parts. So 360 divided by 12 will give you 30 degrees. So you need to make 30 degree divisions. You can go ahead and do that with the help of a simple protractor or you can also use the construction approach. For that, keep one leg of the compass at O, other leg at B and then with that much amount as the radii and with B as the center, you need to cut an arc. Okay, something like this. Let me show you. You need to cut an arc and then with this fellow as the center, this point. Okay, you need to cut an arc yet again. So, the angle subtended by this arc at O is going to be 30 degrees. By angle subtended by this much portion of the arc, only this much portion of the arc at O again is going to be 30 degrees. So, this is basically called the trisection of a 90 degree angle. And this, this entire step has to be repeated over to all the quarters until you have something of this sort. Okay, now guys, uh, we are coming to the business portion of this particular video and this is going to be very interesting. Remember this, vertical lines from the outer circle, horizontal lines from the inner circle. Drill this into your mind, vertical lines from the outer circle and horizontal lines from this inner circle. So something of this sort. Let me show you, vertical lines from the out outer circle and horizontal lines or horizontal line from the inner circle and this intersection point is a point which is on the ellipse itself. Let's do the same drill, vertical and horizontal this way. Now vertical will be above and horizontal this way. Same stuff, same stuff. Vertical will be towards the uh, towards uh, the upside you can say and horizontal will be towards the left, something like this. Up and left and this is going to be down and left. This is going to be again down and left. And once you have all the points, these are the points which are to be placed on the ellipse itself and you need to pass a curve through all these points and finally, the ellipse that you're going to achieve would look something like this. Right, you can go ahead and make this ellipse with the help of a French curve, with the help of a flexi curve and if your hand is very good, then you can go ahead and do this freehand. Well, that's it. So that's it for today. I'll see you again.